Together with the Hazrat Mehdi, peace be upon him, make Islamic moral values prevail all over the world. So, we live in very special times. It's called end times. There are hundreds of hadiths from our Prophet wasallam, given the signs of the end times. End times means the last times before the last day, doomsday. The end times refers to the period of time close to the end of the world. According to Islam, in this time, there will be a terrible trials of Dajjal and Tychrist, many earthquakes and the emergence of Yejuj and Mejuj, Gog and Magog, after which the morality of the Quran will prevail, and people will extensively adhere to the values it teaches, inshallah. So the religion with Allah is Islam. Throughout history, Allah has sent His messengers to many peoples. These messengers of Allah summoned mankind to the true path and communicated to them His message. The religions revealed by Allah to separate peoples in distinct periods were one and the same. So Allah says in Surah Al Imran 84-85, I seek refuge in Allah from a curse, Satan. Say we believe in Allah and what has been sent down to us and what was sent down to Abraham, Ibrahim, Ishmael, and Isaac, and Jacob, and the tribes, and what Moses, Musa, and Jesus, Isa, and all the prophets were given by their Lord. So we, we believe uh, the revelation of Allah, the Gospel, and the Torah, and which was revealed to other prophets also, inshallah. We do not differentiate between any of them. We are Muslims submitted to him. If anyone desires anything other than Islam as a religion, it will not be accepted from him. And in the hereafter, he will be among the losers. So, at the sight of Allah, the religion of Islam, but Allah also says, we do not differentiate between any of them, between any, all these prophets, inshallah. Allah also says, I am pleased with Islam as a religion for you. Allah selected Islam for us as a religion, and this will be until the last day, inshallah. Quran, and that's the reason why Isa Islam will also follow the Quran. Yes. Now, uh, so now in this verse, Allah says, "I come confirming the Torah I found already there, and to make lawful for you some of what was previously forbidden to you. I have brought you a sign from your Lord, so have fear of Allah and obey me." The Quran is the only unaltered divine revelation. All the religion, all the uh, revelations, the Gospel and Torah, was uh, changed, as you know. Some of, uh, some parts are compatible with the Quran, but uh, many parts are being changed. But the only unaltered divine revelation is Quran, and it will be not changed <coughs> until the last day because it's Allah says it's under the protection of Allah. <coughs> After the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, Allah sent another messenger from a different tribe to reveal and restore the original religion to the world. And he endowed him with a noble, noble book. This messenger was the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless him and grant him peace. And the book is the Quran and only unaltered divine revelation because it's under the protection of Allah, inshallah. The coming of the Prophet Jesus is heralded both from the Quran and the Hadith. Now, I will give you the evidences, inshallah. It is the glad tidings implied in the Quran and reported in detail in the Hadith that the Prophet Jesus will come back to earth and summon people in the right, in the right way. The time, I told you, we are living is in the end times. The end times has two stages. The first period is one in which material and spiritual problems dominate the world. These are the times we are living in right now. Many wars, <coughs> conflicts, and natural events, earthquakes are happening, and many other signs. The second period come to is called the Golden Age, when Islam will prevail the world with Mehdi, peace be upon him, and also with Isa, salam. Islam will prevail the world, there will be a Golden Age. There will be social justice, there will be freedom, there will be good morality, there will be no wars, no conflicts, and all the weapons will be eradicated from the world. Inshallah. Science following one another like pieces of necklace, falling one after the other when the, its string is cut. That's a hadith from Tirmidhi. Signs following one another like the pieces of a necklace means one coming after another one. And since 30 years, 35 years, we see all the signs given in the hadith are happening one after another one. 300 signs came to be true, mashallah. Allah says in Quran, I seek refuge in Allah from maker Satan. <coughs> Say, praise to be Allah. 
He will show you His signs and you will recognize them. So Allah uh, promises He will show His signs and Allah is showing His signs now and we will recognize them, inshallah. What are the signs of the end times? In order to understand that we are living in the end times and the coming of the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, and the appearance of Hazrat Mehdi, peace be upon him, is very close, one needs to know what these signs are. Now I will uh, talk about these signs. For example, in one hadith, a major sign is given for, for the end times. An attack to the Kaaba and the bloodshed in the Kaaba. And this attack has happened in the 21st November 1979. Uh, this is the uh, newspaper of the 22nd, the next day. In, it was in the newspapers. There was a bloody attack to the Harabi Sharif. This is from Turkish newspapers. Armed attack in the Kaaba, it says. And uh, reprehensible. Uh, and this is uh, Harabi Sharif. This is uh, attack to the Kaaba and the bloodshed. And this hadith, in this hadith, our Prophet says, it will be the sign of the year of the appearance of the Mehdi I told you this is a special date. This, ha this happened is 21st November 1979. is the first day of Hijri, Hijaira style, 1400. 1400, the year Hijaira, which is beginning uh, uh, with 1979, 21st November, is a special year mentioned in the Hadith by our Prophet for the appearance of Mehdi inshallah. Remember in, the, uh, in a, uh, the hadith that I showed you from Tirmidhi, <coughs> our Prophet said, it will, these signs will happen like pieces of necklace, one after another one. So, beginning started with the bloody attack to the Kaaba, and this happened first time in the history. Bloody attack to the Kaaba, and the uh, pilgrimage was prevented. Bloodshed in the Kaaba, again, newspapers. And this is another one in 1989. But in this hadith, uh, uh, our Prophet said, it will not exactly happen in the Kaaba, but close to the Kaaba, another second, uh, is a second hadith, and this happened in 1987, uh, uh, terror in Kaaba, it says, again. A war between Iran and Iraq, and everybody knows a war started in between Iran and Iraq in 1980. This is also Hijaira 1400. It lasted seven years. And in the hadith, our prophet mentioned there was no winner of this war. And remember, there was no winner of this war. In the Iran-Iraqi war, there was no winner. So Muslims uh, at, uh, were, uh, were in a war against each other. This happened October 18, 1980. Or another sign, a great fire from the east. You see the Kuwait, uh, in Kuwaiti fires in July 1991. Another uh, described hadith is the destruction of Baghdad by flames. That's what hadith said. And that was the attack of the United States to Iraq, and there was a war, and the, uh, the Baghdad was in flames, like mentioned in the Hadith. And this happened in 2003, Baghdad burning, it says in the newspapers. Or the construction of Iraq is uh, described in the Hadith, and these are the newspapers, USA will reconstruct Iraq, it says, <coughs> newspapers uh, titles. The Iraqis will be left penniless, Iraq is deep in debt. In the hadith, our prophet says the Iraqis will be left penniless, and the Iraq is deep in debt, another sign. Or another sign, vanishing of an army in the desert, is described in the hadith. And these are newspapers. No, Saddam and his, uh, his uh, soldiers are lost, it says in the newspaper. What happened to the, uh, to the guards? And no, uh, many of the Saddam's planes found buried in the sand, as described in the hadith. Or the people of Iraq uh, fleeing northward to Sham. These are the newspapers. Uh, the people of Iraq moved to Sham, to Syria at that time. And another hadith stopping the water of the Euphrates is a sign of uh, the, the end times is described. And the Keban Dam was built in Turkey and stopped the water of the Euphrates for the first time in the history in 1974, 1975. And uh, our prophet described in the hadiths, lunar and solar eclipses in the month of Ramadan, 15 days apart and two following years. And this happened in 1981, a lunar eclipse in 1981, Hijaira 1401, on Ramadan 15, a solar eclipse in Ramadan 29, it happened. The next year, because it's described in the hadith, two following years, next year, a lunar <coughs> eclipse in 1982, Hijaira 14.2, on Ramadan, 14 and solar eclipse on Ramadan, 28 happened. Two following years, sun and moon eclipses, sun and lunar eclipses, two following years, 15 days apart happened. Alhamdulillah. 
or in, uh, in the hadith, a passing of a comet is described. Halei comet uh, passed in 1986 as another sign of the end times. Another comet is described, but this is very interesting, I will tell you why. Because in the hadith, which is also related by Imam Rabbani, it's described a comet with two tails. So everybody knows, comet means a tail, a star, a tail in the back. Tail means something in the back. But in this hadith, a comet is described with two tails, one in front and one in the back. And before, astronomers never seen a comet like this. So our prophet said it will be brighter than normal and it will move from east to west against all other objects. That is the description in the hadith. And Lurin, as you see, these are pictures from NASA, had two tails, 2009, 24 February, it passed close to the earth. And nobody has ever seen a comet like this before. It had one tail in the front and one tail in the back. It was six times brighter than normal, NASA said. And it was moving against all other objects from east to west, as described in the hadith, alhamdulillah. <coughs> Another description is given in the hadith. This is very interesting. Our Prophet wasallam said, there will be droughts before this comet, and there will be floods after that. People will uh, complain about, about the, too, too much rain. You might, you might uh, remember, before 2009, 2007, and 2008, there were droughts all over the world. It's called global warming, they said. You remember that. You know what happened after this comet passed in 2009? There were, uh, there were floods everywhere in Europe, in Turkey, in Australia, in America. Floods all over the world, like our prophet described, alhamdulillah. Or a corruption of dust and smoke was described in the hadith, September 11 attack, you see. That's another sign of the end times. An increase in, in the earthquakes. Earthquakes will increase, our prophet said. According to scientists, earthquakes has been increased starting 1980 like it has never been seen in the history before. You hear the news from earthquakes all over the world, almost every day. These are uh, the scientists, gra graphics done by the scientists, you see. And it's coming, 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 1970s. Always the same, the number of the earthquakes. And all of a sudden, it starts in the end times. Huge increase in the earthquakes, number of earthquakes, like described in the hadiths. Severe floods and tsunamis, natural events increased everywhere. We, heard, we hear new, in the news, tsunami happened in Japan, tsunami happened in Indonesia, tsunami happened there, or earth, uh, earthquakes and floods. An economic crisis is described also in the hadith. There was an economic crisis started all over the world, all of a sudden, including the UK, United States, uh, Europe, and, and, uh, in Asia also. And this is also another sign of the end times. An image shaped like a hand in space is described in the hadith. This is the picture taken by NASA. And this is the, from the, the, the telegraph, actually. Can you read this? Hand of God captured by NASA observatory. An image shaped like a hand in space is described by, the, uh, by our Prophet wasallam in the hadith. And you see the titles of the newspapers. Hand of God captured by NASA observatory. <coughs> MashaAllah. An increase, uh, the increased oppression on Muslims. And the oppression increase on Muslims all over the world, as you know. An explicit denial of Allah is described in the hadith in the end times. And this is, for example, atheistic uh, uh, writings on the buses in London. And, and uh, all the news from all over the world, atheism has increased as in, starting in 1970s, 1980s. Bird and swine flus are described in the hadith. Tall buildings are described in the hadiths as the sign of the end times. You see the tall skyscrapers all over the world. For detailed information, you can go into the website, inshallah, of uh, harunyahya.com. Now, the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. There is an important evidence in the Quran regarding the second coming of the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, and definite information that the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, did not die. And I will read you the verses, inshallah. Now the false claim that the Prophet Jesus was killed. But Allah says he was not killed, he was not crucified. This is the words. I seek refuge in Allah from a curse Satan. And on an, an, on, a, on an account of their saying, we killed, the word, Arabic word to kill is Katarna, the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, messenger of Allah. Allah says, they did not kill, 
وَمَكَتَالَهُهِمْ And they did not crucify وَمَسَلَاوَهُهِمْ But it was made to seem so شُبِّهَا to them. So, they killed another person. The hypocrite who uh, gave uh, Isa a.s. to the Roman soldiers. He was killed. But Allah says, uh, Isa a.s. was not killed وَمَكَتَالَهُهِمْ And they did not crucify him. But it was made to seem so to them. <coughs> Those who argue about it are in doubt about it. They have no real knowledge of it, just conjecture. But Allah repeats one more time. But they certainly did not kill. Surah Nisa 157. So this is a definite evidence from the Quran. He was not, Isa a.s. was not killed. Isa a.s. was not crucified as some Christians believe. Now Allah says, Allah raised him up to himself. Rafahu, Allah is almighty, all wise. So, for no other prophet, nobody else, is something there is a, a, a statement or a definition like this in the Quran. But for Isa a.s., he was not killed, but he was raised him up to himself. So, how are the deaths of the prophets are described in the Quran? The words to kill is katalahu in Arabic. Or mata to die, halaka to perish, salabahu, they crucified him. These are the words. They did not ki kill him, mama katalahu, so he was not killed, and did not crucify him, mama salabahu. Now, when Allah said, Jesus, I will take you back, mutabafeka, this is the Arabic word uh, in this verse, and raise you up, verifaika, to me, and purify of those who are unbelievers. And I will place the people who follow you about those who are unbelievers. Now Allah says, Jesus, I will take you back into the Fekka and raise you up, the Fekka, to me and purify you of those who are unbelievers. And Allah says, I will place the people who follow you, <coughs> who follow you means the, the sincere believers, those, uh, about those who are unbelievers. In his first coming, the uh, believers were not about the unbelievers. There were only 12 disciples the Prophet Jesus a.s. had, and they were, uh, the unbelievers were very strong at that time. So in order to this happen, this verse come to be true, he must come back again, inshallah. Now, the word tawafa, to cause the to die, to take in one sleep, or to take back. The tawafa comes in Quran in another verse. Jesus said, I said to them nothing but, the, uh, but what you ordered to me to say. Worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. I was a witness against them as long as I remained among them, but when you took me back to you, Tawaffa, you were the one watching over them. You are the witness of all things. So the word Tawaffa comes in this verse. In this verse. In Arabic, the word that is translated in some translations of this verse as, you have caused me to die is Tawaffa, and comes from the root Wafa to fulfill. It is he who takes you back to himself, Yitawafakum, at night. So this word comes in this verse. Why during the sleep, tawafa, yitawafa kakum, comes in this verse at night, while knowing the things you perpetrate by day, and then wakes you up again, so that a specified term may be fulfilled. So this is not a real death, as we see in this verse. This word comes like uh, for Jesus alayhi salam. That means during the sleep, our soul is taken, like death, but it's not real death, so it will be given again. And yitawafa is the word like in other words, so Isa Islam was raised up to the presence of Allah, so he will come back again. This is another evidence. Allah takes back people's selves. Yitawafa, when they are dead, Maftiha arise, and those who have not yet died while they are asleep, Lam Tamud. He keeps hold of those who death, Maft, has been decreed, and sends a respect for the specified term. You see, the same word is coming up, inshallah. Now, the second one is katala, to kill. Pharaoh said, let me kill Moses, Akhtulu Musa, and let him call upon his Lord. I am afraid that he may change your religion and bring about corruption in the land. That was because they killed Yaktuluna and prophets without any right to do so. So this is the word, the word used for uh, killing and for, for death in the Quran, inshallah. And Halaka, when he Joseph died, Halaka, you said Allah will never send another messenger after him. 
as you, uh, as you, as, as we might have seen, these words are not used for Isa alayhi salam, and Tawafa is uh, used. That means he will come back again, inshallah. He's not dead yet. And Mata also dead. Then when we decreed that his Solomon should die, Mevt, nothing the wall, she's dead, Mevt he to them except the worm which ate his staff. And Khalid, immortal, we did not give them bodies which did not eat food, nor were they, they, uh, they immortal. Khalidane, Khalidana. Now, they did not kill him, and they did not crucify him, Bama Salabahu, Salabah to crucify. So he wasn't crucified, he, was not, uh, he wasn't killed, he is not dead. That means he is coming back, inshallah, in order to die like everybody else. The private Jesus, peace be upon him, will return to the earth, evidence from the Quran. There is important evidence in the Quran regarding the second coming of the private Jesus, peace be upon him. Now I will give you these evidences, inshallah. In a verse, Allah says, Surah Al Imran 55, when Allah said, you can know, take note of these verses, inshallah, as an evidence for returning of Isa alayhi When Allah said, Jesus, I will take you back and raise you up to me and purify you of those who are unbelievers. And I will place the people who follow you about those who are unbelievers until the day of resurrection. And I will place the people who follow you about those who are unbelievers. So it's at his first coming 2,000 years ago. This did not happen as I told you. Only 12 dis disciples were uh, believers in his presence and in Allah. And they were very weak at that time. The unbelievers were very strong. They dominated the world. But now for his, uh, uh, he, in order to this worse to happen, he must come back again, and Islam will prevail the world, inshallah. And that is uh, an indication of domination of Islam in the world. Then you will all return to me, and I will judge between you regarding the things about which you differ. And another and, uh, and, uh, uh, evidence is, uh, very strong evidence is for his return. There is not one of the people of the book. People of the book are Christians and Jews. There is not one, Allah says, or the people of the book, who will not believe in him before he dies, Allah says. So only 12 disciples believed in him. Now, Allah says there is not one of the people of the book, there will be no, not even a single Christian, single Jew, who will not believe in him before he dies. As you know, uh, Jews, they don't accept prof, uh, a prophet, Isa as a prophet. But in order to this uh, verse to happen, he must come back, an entire world believe in him. Islam will dominate the world. So this is a verse about domination of Islam and it's before his return, inshallah. And on the day of resurrection, he, Jesus, will be a witness against them, Allah says, Surah and Nisa 159. Another very powerful evidence. These are very three very powerful evidences, inshallah. This is the third one. He, Jesus, is a sign of the hour, Allah says. He, Jesus, is a sign of the hour. Have no doubt about it, but follow me. This is a straight path. This is a description used for no other prophet, not even our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because uh, now, uh, if we think Jesus alayhi salam was sent how many years after our before our prophet? About 500 years, right? So our Allah did not say for our prophet he's a sign of the hour, but for uh, Jesus alayhi salam. So if our prophet is not a sign of the hour. Isa alayhi salam must come back again, inshallah, for to be sign of the hour. Hour means the last day, the doomsday. A very powerful evidence for his return, inshallah. No doubt to Jesus is a sign of the hour, one that declares that the hour will come, that the dead will be resurrected and stand up. Because the miracle of the prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, second coming, and his miracle of resurrecting the dead, together with his revelation that the dead will rise, prove that the day of judgment is real. According to the hadith, his arrival is a sign of the last day. Muhammad Hamdi Yazir of Al Madhu, the Quranic trans, uh, description, inshallah, interpretation. Now, in Al Maid, Allah says, Remember when Allah said, Jesus, son of Mary, remember my blessing to you and to your mother when I reinforce you with the purest spirit, so that you could speak to the people in the cradle. That's one of his miracles, actually, he spoke in the, in the cradle. And when you were fully grown, and when I taught you the book, and the wisdom, and the Torah, and the gospel. Now I want you to pay attention to this underlined part. Allah says, I taught you the book. The word book is uh, used in Quran, in many other verses for Quran itself. So Allah says, I taught you the Quran, 
the wisdom and the Torah and the gospel. So uh, Jesus in his first coming, of course he knew Torah, Torah was existing there, and then he was revealed gospel, he knew gospel also. But he did not know Quran. So in order, in order uh, to know the Quran, he must come back again, inshallah. Mm -hmm. The likeness of Jesus in Allah's sight is the same as Adam, Allah says, Surah Al-Imran. So uh, this is a sign, uh, like Adam, peace be upon him. So he did not have father, inshallah. And, and there's a second meaning, it's Allah knows the truth, of course, uh, inshallah. Adam salam, was sent from the uh, presence of Allah to the earth. So this is another sign, inshallah, of uh, Isa salam, coming from the presence of Allah to the earth, returning, inshallah. Jesus said, peace be upon me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I am raised up again alive. So in this verse, we understand he will die like everybody else, inshallah, the day I die, and the day I am raised up again alive. So in order to everybody uh, to die, he must come back, because you remember in other words, Allah says, he did not die, he was not crucified, but he will, Allah says he will die like everybody else, Surah Maryam, so he will come back again, inshallah. Remember when Allah said, Jesus, son of Mary, remember my blessing to you and to your mother when I reinforced you with the pure spirit so that you could speak to people in the cradle and when you were fully grown. Now I want you to pay attention to this underlined part also. The word used over here is Kehran, Surah al maidah 110. And according to the Islamic scholars, the word Kehran means adulthood between 30, 35 to 50 years old age. Now remember, he was uh, uh, taken to the presence of Allah, he was 33 years of age. So in order to be, live this period between 35 and 50, he must come back again for Kehlan, inshallah. Remember when Allah said, Jesus, son of Mary, remember my blessing to you and to your mother when I reinforced you with the pure spirit so that you could speak to people in the cradle and when you were fully grown Kehlan, he will speak to people in the cradle and also when fully grown, Kehlan, the same word comes in, and we will, uh, will be one of the righteous, Surah Al Imran. So for this Kehlan period between 35 and 50, he will return, inshallah. Now, conclusion is a conclusion. All Christians and Muslims must work together and do their utmost to prepare the nicest welcome ever for him. Now, we have as a Muslim obligation to prepare the grounds for Isa salam, inshallah, for Mehdi alayhi salam, to unite. Because Allah says, hold fast to the rope of Allah all together and do not separate. The unity is a ma ma of Muslims is an, an order from Allah, inshallah. <coughs> Allah, this is a promise from Allah in Surah al 55. And this will happen again <coughs> because it's a promise of Allah. Allah says, I seek refuge in Allah from a curse, Satan. Allah has promised those of you, so this is a promise of Allah, those of you who believe and do right actions that He will make them successors in the land. <coughs> this, this is a promise of Allah to the believers. And who, which believers? Sincere believers. That He will make them successors in the land. And He made those before them successors and will firmly establish for them the religion with which He is pleased. So which religion is that? Islam, inshallah. Allah will firmly establish for them the, their religion. Is this happening right now? No. Because we see uh, there is uh, unbelievers are dominating the world. There are conflicts in the Islamic world. Muslims are in war against each other. So in order to this happen, inshallah, uh, uh, before the last day, Islam will prevail the world. And give them in place of their fear, security. Today, Fear is dominating the world in Syria, in Egypt, in Afghanistan, in Iraq. But Allah says, uh, He is pleased and give them in place of their fear, security, justice. We will dominate the world, there will be no wars, no bloodshed. And this will happen before the last day means, inshallah, the golden age is coming. They worship me, not associating anything with me. The only criteria Allah wants is not to associate anything with Allah, no mushrikims, inshallah. So sincere believers, for sincere believers, and who are they? Mehdi and his students, Allah will dominate the world of Islam, inshallah. <coughs> and you do not believe after that, such people are deviators. And in this here, Allah says, and he will make them successors in the land, as he made those before them successors. In the Quran, 
During the time of the Solomon, peace be upon him, and two Karnay, Islam dominated the world, religion dominated the world. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Allah says, as a third one in the Hadiths, our Prophet also says, as a fifth, uh, inshallah, at the time of the Mahdi, Islam will dominate the world. And this is the promise of Allah. Allah has promised, so since Allah keeps His promise, Allah never fails uh, to keep His promise, inshallah, Islam will dominate the world before the, the doomsday, the last day. And now we are living in the end times, how do we know that? We have seen more than 300 signs.